Jennifer Davis here, and today we're talking TikTok with Dr. Asan Jazini, spine surgeon at VSI. Hey there. Hi, how are you? I'm great. All right. So now you got to start by spilling a secret. Do doctors and spine surgeons actually watch TikTok? <laughs> Let's start there. Uh, you know, the answer is yes. Um, like you anyone know. else. Yeah, it's because well, TikTok is super addictive. I mean, uh, it's just designed to be that way, right? So it, I definitely think that it definitely listens to you. And so when you get on TikTok, it definitely uh, will show you videos. Like I'm into like basketball, soccer, and athletic, you know, fitness. And so I get bombarded with these very cool, funny uh, videos that, you know, is tailored toward my interests. Um, and so it's addictive. It's easy. You can keep flipping. I mean, it definitely can get out of control. Uh, so I have a dedicated time and a limit in terms of how much I spend, you know, What's my time limit? on it. About 10 to 15 minutes. Oh, and then yeah. I'm like, I, I got to put this aside. <laughs> Uh, I definitely will cheat, you know, here and now and then. But um, yes, if, if, if otherwise, you, you can get out of control. I know. I, yeah, I'm not getting sports as much. I get a lot of like cooking stuff. I've learned how to properly cut a mango from TikTok. I feel like you can learn mm -hmm. so much. Yeah, I definitely. I love gardening, so I get gardening tips. Uh, it's a little random. I, I definitely. Know. I like. I like the randomness of it. Um, yeah. You know, you we're also gonna try today to debunk truth from fiction. You know, there's tons of advice on there about how much of it is right. That's what we're gonna ask you to help us sift through today. I guess though, you've probably been doing that in your clinic. You know, you've been in practice for over a decade before it was happening on TikTok. Do yeah. you have people, patients coming in and being like, Hey doc, I heard this or I heard that. Does this work? Does it not? Oh, ab absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's one of the funnest uh, aspects of my job is talking to patients, answering their questions. You know, as a society, you know, we are more and more informed. Patients come in with a lot of knowledge from their own research. They, you know, they Google medicine, right? I just had a patient this morning talking about that. Uh, you know, my own family, my mom, hey, is this back brace the right thing for me? And so it, it, it keeps you as a, as, a, as a surgeon on your toes. You got to be always reading. You have to stay up to date uh, and learn about these new products and see, you know, what's the right answer because you have to be informed and be able to, to educate your patients uh, on all sorts of topics. All right, uh, let's do it then. Here's what I've done. I've gone through TikTok and I looked for videos that were in, that had m multiple millions of views. So okay. That, that was the criteria I used and things that seem to be trending. Um, and the first one that I'm starting with, I mean, I've been seeing people doing this out in the world. I was out visiting my sister in Seattle. It's very hilly. And I saw people doing this all over in Seattle. So number one, we want to talk about some call it retro walking. Some call it backwards walking. This trend has been around for a while. Um, it's been on Fit Talk since 2023. It's still going strong. And all these influencers say, if you walk backwards, there's more health benefits. And sometimes it seems they're suggesting not just walking backwards, but doing it up a hill. Although some people say it's easier up a hill. So let's start first of all with, well, what do you think of the videos? Have you seen it? Have you seen anyone doing it out in the world too? I, I saw some of the videos and then I have to tell you, it makes me cringe a little bit, <laughs> but we can definitely, uh, let's, let's, let's go through them. Okay. So first of all, do you think it, gives you more benefits from a strength training or cardio or exercise? Percentage? Yeah. So I think from a coordination standpoint, it forces you to do, whenever you do something that's not comfortable for your body, you it's, it's not comfortable for a reason, right? Cause you're not used to it. Your, your brain neural signals, um, that communication signal pathway isn't built and developed yet. Right. When we were walking, you're not really thinking about it, right? It's a circuit that, you know, um, it's sort of like on, on, on self-driving mode per se. So when you're doing something like walking backwards that your body is not trained to do, it's going to for force you to think more. You're going to activate muscles and neural circuits that you otherwise wouldn't. So I think, if, you know, to answer your question, the answer is yes. I think that's beneficial, but there's always a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. And so uh, sometimes these videos, you have to, you know, have to always put a disclaimer because, uh, sometimes it's just not worth the, the risks. I know some people are doing it on treadmills. They're going yeah. pretty fast. It looks a little, it looks a little scary. Others are right out there doing it in the world. 
Okay, so real quick, do you think it helps you lose weight? Let's just go through these real quick. Does it help yes. you lose weight? Yes. The answer is yes. Do you think it helps you make get stronger muscles? Yes. Do you think it, it could, improves your core strength? Yes. Okay, what about the impact on your back? Do you think that's good or bad? And what about your knees too? I wonder about both. I think the impact on your knees and back is, is neutral. I don't think is is positive or negative. What if you're going uphill? Backwards or forwards? Backwards. Uh, <laughs> it's it's gonna be difficult. it's gonna be easier going uphill backwards than than downhill. Why? So there's there's more stress because when you're going downhill, you have to lean back and you're gonna cause increased stress on your lower back because you're you're gonna you're gonna tend to you know try to fall forward. So when you are walking backwards, your your center of gravity is more aligned, so it's gonna put less stress on your back. Okay. So it's gonna hurt less going uphill backwards. That makes sense. Does us talking about this make you want to try it? <laughs> uh, I definitely, I definitely walk backwards myself. You know, as a training technique, it's kind of like when you, you know skiing backwards. Have you ever done that? I, no. you know, I, I, I ski backwards uh, because it's a different. Yeah, it's it's just like walking backwards. It's like a skill set that to be a better skiing downhill skier. If you can ski backwards, it 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 just improves that other circuitry with your balance and proprioception. Uh, so it's sort of analogous to that. Um, okay. I don't, you know, I love skiing, so that's some a skill set that I work on a lot. The so only I, analogy I can make, Dr. Jazzini, is that I have brushed my teeth with my left hand because I heard yeah. Oh yeah. Computer, but that I have not skied. I've only yeah. So as a sur- so I'm left handed. Uh, as a surgeon, I had to learn how to be a right-handed surgeon because most of my, tri- you know, mentors were right-handed people, and that definitely makes you a better surgeon because you have to do a lot of things with both hands, and be able to work in tight corners. And so, right-handed people will try to try to tie with their left hand too to develop that part of their brain, because we definitely have tendencies where we're more stronger at. So. Uh, that's why you know b- basketball players will learn how to be- shoot lefty and, or, or righty so they can go both ways. So it's the same concept. All right. So it sounds like here our, our number one uh, trend here is pretty good. It sounds like if that's what you if you want to walk backwards, go for it. Um, it if you're yes, first, I guess stop. as long as you do it in a, in, as long as it's safe. Yes, I think doing it on a treadmill as the treadmill is running and then trying to turn and walk backwards is which I think you're referring to. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't do that. All right. And don't do it crossing the street. But if you want to do it on the sidewalk and there's no traffic, go for it. Um, okay. Yeah. Number two, the number of videos saying, you know, talking about the perfect sleep position is just staggering. That could be nothing. You could have nothing but that in your algorithm. Um, tens of millions of views on some of these. Um, and, you know, I know you and I both looked at some of them. It's interesting. I like when they show a position and say good or bad. The one that intri- intrigued me, they called the mountain climber, where you're on your stomach, like your right hand's kind of up, one knee is up, your leg is down. It does look like you're literally scaling a mountain, but you're on your stomach. A lot of talk about um, sleeping on your stomach. Okay, let's start with a lightning round, Dr. Gizzini. Number one, does the perfect sleeping position exist? Yes. It does? Short answer is yes. The, the the long answer is it depends. It depends on you know your 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 back, your other health health factors. Sometimes a patient can't just sleep on their back, right? There's other issues that hinder them. So you know it's simple to say yes, right? Because if everything else being equal, the best position is sleeping on your back because that's going to help you breathe better. That's going to doesn't cause any shoulder imbalance or muscle imbalance. You know I prefer to fall asleep on my side, on my left side, and then. Right before I'm about to fall asleep, I'd sort of turn on my back because I know that's the mm-hmm. best thing f- for me. Um, but that's not always ideal for people, right? So I, I don't want to give an answer where I'm, you know, I'm pigeonholing and making people feel like, oh my God, if I'm not on my back, there's something wrong with me. Because that may. Say, so how bad is sleeping on your stomach? Because a lot of these videos make it sound really, really bad. The issue with sleeping on your stomach is it's going to really hinder your ability to breathe. And you may not know that you're not getting enough oxygen during the night. So if there is one thing I would tell you not to do is to sleep on your stomach. I it think, can also be bad for your back, can't it? <clears throat> yes, because you're not putting, you're not allowing your back to rest and putting it in the right, in the right posture. You're it probably a little bit, aren't you? 
Yeah, you're not letting the disc rehydrate. So one okay. of the things that happens when we're sleeping, our disc rehydrate. And if you're putting it in a in a flex position, you're not allowing your disc to, to rest. You know, there isn't a lot of good d- data or research on this, but you know, I would say if you had to put them in order, the best thing is to be able to sleep on your back. You know, I think sleeping on your side is probably the second second best. You know, one thing to do if you are a huge slight uh, sleeper is to put pillows between your knees and your ankles to make sure that you know you want to make sure those bony prominences, those you know bumps, are not really rubbing against each other. Um, So that's that's another sort of way to sort of still be a side sleeper, but do it in in a way that doesn't cause more problems. All right. And what about where your hands are? Does that impact your back pain at all? Like a lot of people posted crazy videos. A lot of people seem to sleep with both hands behind their head, um, almost like they're relaxing on a picnic blanket. Some people sleep with like one arm up. Does does the arm position? I don't, no, I don't think the arm position affects your back. Okay. One thing that we see a lot is people have hand numbness, tingling okay. in their in their hands, and they think it's coming from their back. But really what it is, is because when they're sleeping, they're flexing their elbow too much or their wrist is, is sort of curved in like this. And that can cause something called carpal tunnel where there's pinching of the nerves at the, at the, um, at the wrist or the elbow. Then that could be mistaken for sciatica down the arm. So, you know, I prescribe, you know, those wrist splints you can wear or the elbow like splint. Yeah, like a CVS or Walgreens. And that helps to keep those areas in a neutral position. So I would say what I would recommend is to keep your, if you can be in a neutral, comfortable position, maybe you can prop your your wrist or elbow with a pillow so that it's not, you don't want to be in a flexed, crunched up position because that's what's going to cause impingement. And same thing with the arm above your head. My only concern would be that, you know, your elbow is getting flexed like this for such a long period of time. Uh, one thing to do is ask, you know, if you sleep next to someone else to ask your significant other, hey, when I when I'm sleeping, how do I because you may not you may think you fall asleep that way, but you may not end up that way. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, someone, you know, my significant other had to tell me that, yeah, you fall asleep on your side, but you always end up on your back. Mm-hmm. So everyone has their own sort of quirks in terms of how they fall asleep. Before we move on to hold you accountable, I know your New Year's resolution was to prioritize sleep. How are you doing with that? I'm doing better. (laughs) Uh, I'm doing. I've I've definitely saved about an hour uh, in terms of when I fall asleep. So I'm actually getting up earlier. Like yesterday, I got up at like five thirty and went for a run, which I never do. Um, So I'm definitely have had some progress in terms of my sleep. One thing I did is cut down on the coffee. After like 10 a.m., I don't drink any more caffeine. Uh, with the coffee, uh, if I didn't yourself off with TikTok at night too, so you're not up. Yes, that. yes, because that's <laughs> usually that's usually when I get tempted when I'm trying to relax. But then too. it yeah. used to get out of control. Sometimes it gets out of control. Then you're like, next thing you know, you've been you know scrolling for an hour on TikTok. Yeah. You know, not the way to do it. Everything, okay. everything in moderation. Everything in moderation. Okay, let's move on to number three. Um, found millions of views, 7.6 million just on one video talking about how to reduce back pain in high heels. So all the people who love all the beautiful high heels out there, um, a lot of talk about is it causing or worsening back pain and then can you do anything about it? So what's your thought? Oh, for sure. I mean, high heels causes a whole downstream of effects, right? So it's starting with the ankle, the problem is it, that it tightens the, the calf muscles, right? You're forcing the, the hind foot to come, the, the, the heel to come up. So it shortens the muscle that goes across our knee. Then it causes the knee to be tight. Then it causes your hamstrings to be tight, which then has a cascading effect of end your back being more tight, right? Because you don't have as much good hip mobility, you're going to be causing more stress to your back. So I think one way to kind of... But they're so pretty. I know, I know. And I'm not, say, I'm not saying I, you should get eliminate them. What I'm saying is have have two options available. Like, um, you know, have, maybe have a your high heels for that little event or pictures. And then as, as soon as you start to feel tightness or pain, have, you know, a pair of sneakers that you can wear or slippers. So I think sort of being versatile and... So that you're not forced to be 
in heels the entire night for, you know, hours. for, for hours or you to at least or at least be able to go back and forth right maybe you can wear it for i don't know 30 minutes so i, I think it's unreasonable to tell people just get rid of high heels uh for, for especially for you know events and you know you want to look your best i get it but always have that second option so that you're not forcing yourself to be in it for the whole night what about the the gel pads or the cushion pads? Some people are like, put it in the toe. It solves all your problems. Put it in the heel. Solves I all your problems. I think those can help with the toes, but it's still not going to solve the issue of the foot being up. I mean, the heel being up and causing the muscle contracture that can, and and that you know the problem with that is once it gets becomes tight, then is you have to do so much work to get that loosened up again. So the key is prevention. You know, be able to alternate quickly. Um, so that you're not in that position for so long. All right. One other question. One of the videos I saw that had a lot of views said the solution was to tape your third and fourth toe together and that that would eliminate pain. Does that, mm, does that work? Would it do anything? That sounds suspect to me. <laughs> your your toes works? are not meant to be together. Now, there are foot conditions where the podiatrist will do that. So I don't want to uh, completely say that's wrong. But to make these like grand suggestions to tape your toes, they're not meant to be together. They're That's meant to be right. individual toes, right? So, right. whatever. So, so questions on that one. Yeah, usually when someone says this is the solution to all your problems, the answer is there's probably a little bit of gray to that. We need to there's do a little bit more research. There that may not yeah. fit in the in the TikTok. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, let's go on to our next one. So there's a fascinating video, got 3.2 million videos on this one, and it shows a guy in his kitchen and he pushes up on his kitchen counter with both hands. So he's balancing his whole body weight on his hands and his feet are dangling. And he stands there and he says, this is amazing. It's how you can decompress your spine. Yeah, so- Question if you, number one is, can you decompress your spine? And question number two is, does doing it on your kitchen counter like that really work? Okay, great question. So let's first define decompression of the spine, what that means. So the way they're, the, what they're referring to is offloading the pressure on the disc. The disc are those cushions between our bones. It's like the tires in our back. When there's gravity, it basically they compress, right? You know, that's why there's fluid in them. There's like sort of the gel, the, the spring in our back. And so what they mean by decompression is taking the load off your spine to let them relax. And that's what happens when you're sleeping because there's no gravity. You're laying down in your back and, that, and that's what you're naturally decompressing it. Now, there's other ways to decompress it. You can do an inversion table. You can get into a pool, right? There's no gravity there. So that's going to help it de help to decompress. So I think this is a very like, I don't know, easy way, you know, throughout the day, if you want to do that, I think it's fine. I don't think there's anything novel about it. Um, I don't think that's un unsafe to do it that way. I think for most people, is that going to be really enough of a decompression? I think for the for the everyday person, if you if you're sitting down for too long and you need to get up and quickly put your put your body on your hands to decompress, I don't think that's a you know unsafe thing to do at all. So it, it it's not it's, it's definitely not it's not cringeworthy, but. Um, not as bad as taping your toes together. So we're going to give that with some, yeah, that we're going we're, we're gonna to give that a neutral rating. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. Number five, um, lots of videos out there saying, Hey, do this stretch and it will stretch out your back pain in seconds. The thing that, you know, intrigued me on this one was it's this specific stretch. Although I know you guys are raving about stretching all the time. I also was wondering about the it will stretch it out in seconds. Everyone's talking about doing it in seconds. So my first question is, can you actually eliminate back pain in seconds? That's question number one. I don't think you eliminate it back pain in seconds. You know, I have a very like routine way of stretching. You know, I do a lot of yoga. It's a lot of sculpt work. Uh, it takes about, I would say, 10, five to 10 minutes in a heated environment for me to really adequately stretch both before, so five minutes before, maybe five minutes after the workout. I don't think seconds you're going to have enough time to really allow that muscle to relax. So, you know, my, the way I do it, I hold probably five different positions and each of them for at least, you know, 30 seconds to really get that and allow, give it time. It's, you know, your joints are not going to just automatically unlock. You have to pull that position. And I don't think any one stretch is enough because... Okay. You know, there are some stretches where you're kind of stretching multiple joints at the same time, like your knee and hip and back. 
But really to do it right, you have to either do, you have to do both left and right. And then you want to really hit the big muscle chains, like your posterior muscle chains in, in the buttock area, your knee, your ankle, your hamstrings, your shoulders, and then your back, right? And and, and then your neck as well, right? So sure it really done. takes about, it really takes a good five minutes at least to really do a good stretch. Now, does it eliminate back pain? I think it helps to prevent back injuries, right? Uh, and gives your back more life. But I don't think anything by itself is going to, there's no magic potion, right? It, yeah. The key is prevention, work on your core to get as much longevity as possible. But with if you your, want with your variety, back. I mean, there are a ton of physical therapists, a ton of trainers, a lot of people out there showing you how to do stretches. So it seems like it's a good source if you need some variety. What's oh, your yeah. favorite? If you had like one stretch. My favorite good. is I lay on my back. I I flex both knees to my chest. Then I re- put one down. And then I turn my, let's say my right, let's just start with the right side. My right side toward my left shoulder with the knee. And then I turn my torso and my my shoulder to the opposite side. That's yeah, a great, that's and I can feel. But you have to hold it for like twenty seconds, and you can actually feel it, sort of like a clunk or almost like a click, which is really just the joint finally giving and moving. The facet joints rotating. That's a great way to both um, relax your your hip, but also your back. That's my favorite, just because it feels the best. But I think you got to do you got to do the all you know all best. the. You got to do all the different positions, right? Yeah. Because right, if you right. don't have good mobility, you can't do the workout properly. Your form is off. Then that's how you create what we call stress joints, joint stresses that can cause more injuries. Okay, great. I got two more TikTok trends I want to walk you through before you're done. This next one might be one of the biggest ones next to retro walking that we're talking about. It's that viral crisscross chair. The one video had 17 and a half million views of a girl saying, I got it. Let's try it out. Um, so lots of people talking about that. If anyone hasn't seen it, it's sort of, um, it's extra wide. Like you can actually sit, um, cross-legged on it with both your legs up and cross-legged like you were in a kindergarten class. Um, it does not seem to have arms. It does have a back. It looks kind of cushy. So first of all, on the crisscross chair, good or bad, what do you think? Uh, my, okay. So I think neutral, uh, because there are positives to it and there, and there, I'll tell you what I don't like about it. I like the fact that it gives a person some space. I think it's good to be able to change positions like, uh, sitting, uh, crisscrossed versus just sitting. One position. Apple sauce, my kids would say, yeah. Listen, I think being able to move around and not being in one position is, is, is where I'm okay with it. And I think it's a positive, the net positive where I don't really like that chair. There's no lumbar support, you know? You want to have um, your back, the, the lower back of your spine, to be resting against the support, uh, and so that's why you know I always recommend my patients to get chairs, office chairs that have that lumbar support. Now, you, know, you can modify that chair. You know, you can put it, you know, as simple as like a roll of towel, put it behind that area to give you that lumbar support. But otherwise, you're going to create that gap, and that gap is you're going to increase your stress in that area. Much right. like the high heels, this the, that chair is about the aesthetic and the look, though. So the towel might mess up the look. So okay, so yeah. it seems like that one falls in the category of high heels. Along this line of office chairs, exercise ball chairs, a lot of videos about those too. I saw a great video where an entire office, a whole line of people at their desks, all of them um, <laughs> traded out their chair for the exercise ball. It looks fun. Um, what do you think about that? Is that I good? think. I think the exercise ball is fantastic, not as not for a chair to be used all the time, because what it does, it forces you to have to rely on your own back muscles to have a good posture, right? But you got to make sure that you alternate it, because I don't think anyone can hold that position for and extended no periods. There's, there's zero right? back support, yeah. and then eventually, what's going to happen? You're going to start to hunch hunch forward, right? And so I think as a as a way to throughout the day keep working on your core, I think it's good. But is it like the only chair you should have? I, I don't think it's a good idea because it's just not realistic to th- expect us to be able to hold our posture for that long. Um, so uh, definitely alternate positions, um, maybe use it for an hour, stand up, right? But to expect you to be able to use that as your sole chair, I think is just unrealistic. 
Okay, got it. All right, and here's the last one. Um, a lot of people saying on on TikTok and other platforms, sitting is the new smoking. Um, thousands and thousands of views on different videos. So question number one, is sitting really as bad as smoking? No. Really? That's, yeah. that's absurd, right? I mean, there's been you know decades of data showing uh, the negative effects of smoking, you know, cancer with with osteoporosis, I mean, you name it, heart disease. Uh, um, there's very few things that I would say is as bad as smoking. I think one of the things that is getting there as the data is coming out is, is alcohol, right? Drinking even, you know, we thought for years that a glass of wine is actually good for your heart. And now the data is showing that even one drink, even even red wine, is not really good for you. It causes oh, issues. I, I know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I want to hear that. Yeah, now, I think. No. No. I well. I think what what they're trying to get to with sitting though is sedentary lifestyle. Yeah. Sedentary lifestyle is probably as bad as smoking, right? And so encouraging, uh, uh, you know, everyone to not be sedentary, be active not you know have a stand up desk so they're not sitting all day or making sure that they set up their day so that they have some activity right if you can walk to the grocery store walk to the grocery store if you can walk to a restaurant you know you don't have to always uh, drive to your you know where you're where you're going can you bike i think i think sedentary lifestyle is as bad as smoking if you look at the societal risk that's involved so i think that's what they're getting at but that you know like, like anything in TikTok, if it's not if it's not in in, in two words or in, in in five seconds, then it's catchy. not gonna, it's not going to has to be catchy. But say you're an Uber driver or a truck driver or an office warrior, um, and you that does require you sometimes to sit for four, six, eight hours a day. Even if you are if you're active and you're up and moving the rest of the time, is it fine? Or do we need to think about those longer periods of time where maybe we don't have a choice, but we have to sit and do something. Yeah. I think all of those examples you gave, you can still do modifications, right? Maybe the Uber driver, you know, between, between each passenger, they just get up and just walk around for like 10 seconds, right? Even that little amount of movement so that you're not in that sitting position for so long, I think it's very helpful, number one. And number two, they can plan some of their life to be able to at least exercise, right? So we, we know that at least three to four, even five times of really high intensity workouts of, of, the, of at least 30 minutes dramatically reduces your risk of, of cardiovascular problems, okay? So even the person who's sitting down for six hours could still get that in, in their life. Um, it's, easy, it's easier said than done. I get it, but I've been there you know, as a very busy surgeon. And then by just modifying my schedule or really just making it a priority, you can still make it happen. Um, so I think that's a, the bigger message is let's not be sedentary. Let's plan our life around things that we can do to be a little bit more active because that even that little bit of difference does help a lot. Okay. But when you sit down to watch TikTok, it's okay. <laughs> and I think we've learned today that, you know what, TikTok is a pretty good source, at least of ideas, you know. You don't oh, yeah. Have, you need Absolutely. to pepper all of this a little bit, figure out what makes sense for your life. But what I like about it is it does make you think about new things and new ideas, new stretches, new products, new ways of, you know, for structuring your day. Yeah. Well, it's good hey. for us to think that way. You don't know what you don't know. That's what, that's what I always say. So it's always good to listen to the other side, you know, get more information. And sometimes that makes spurs you to go and do a little bit of research and maybe you find something different. So uh, I don't think that you should ever just not listen to anything because, oh, my God, it can, all be, it can all be bad. Okay. And my last question is, if any of the listeners or I scour TikTok, are we going to see you doing any TikTok dances anywhere? Have you ever done mm, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Never say never. <laughs> Thank you. Uh